Hello. One of the things that I want to start with when we talk about this concept of awareness is being aware of certain populations that may not be automatically visible. And in order to do that, I'm going to uh, talk about a group that calmly uh, falls through the cracks. That group is those students or those groups with learning disorders. These learning disorders can be many things. Learning disorders like ADHD, autism spectrum disorders, um, there are a few others I don't uh, remember right off the top of my head, but I do both from a social, academic point of view, but also a personal point of view, see where there is a lacking. So I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome which is part of the autism spectrum back in the early to mid 90s which is an era when this was kind of misunderstood and I had an educational setback well a long-term setback um, that lasted until my last year of junior high where I would actually be get a teacher who was actually specifically trained in uh, education for uh, students with, on the autism spectrum and it took just one year to get to that standard of proficiency well, not too long after that, my sophomore year in high school, I would face a more challenging situation where my dad would actually have, my dad actually had a brain aneurysm, which somehow managed to be my highest GPA year ever. He would eventually recover and I would finish up my high school education at the high school I started my sophomore year with. But I but that is not all. Just in education wise, I went through a program that uh, was called Train for Success which was within a department of Taft College that is abbreviated West Tech. And my major was Industrial Safety and Health. At that time I got, got seven certifications. Um, I um, basic employee safety for general industry certification, confined space, 40 hour house whopper for, and for those don't know what 40 hour house whopper is, that's hazardous waste management certification. They're all expired now, but I got that. Now in that, it would be, that would be done in 2010. I would start at Mount Simpson College in 2012, finishing two associate degrees in 2017, an associate of arts and humanities and an associate of science in office administration. Now, the following year, I would do the couple courses I needed to finish, the associate of arts in social and behavioral science. During that 2018, 2017, 2018 academic year, I would have, I started my 
Bachelor of Science program with Liberty University, which has a 24-25% acceptance rate. And I'm expected to complete that in the year 2021, which is a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Public Administration. So that's just my education. I want to go through my experience, starting with the oldest uh, that I ever put on a resume. This is all just what I put on resumes. I was a guest room attendant at Furnace Creek Ranch Resort. That, there, that was their former, their, their old name, before they switched over to their current. Uh, then I would move back to Bakersfield and find out that the mission at Kern County, under their old name, the Basel Rescue Mission, they needed somebody who knew how to communicate and get things done and hold high standards for the homeless intervention services, shower and hygiene facilities. So I took over being the coordinator of that at their request. They actually asked me if I would consider it. Well, I decided I would. And during that time period, there were several facilities maintenance issues that needed to be addressed that were not being addressed because one, either the old coordinator didn't know how to communicate it, or two, didn't care enough to bring it up. And these were not light issues. These were pretty severe. Because whenever you're dealing with water, electrical and exposed walls are a risk of mold and electrocution. These were issues that I had noticed and I did not take lightly. I would, I pestered to get somebody to look at them to get them fixed. Thank goodness that they were repaired. And that was in less than a week even. Well, later, during my time, uh, during uh, my time with, Mount, uh, with Liberty University, a year after I finished my so, uh, social and behavioral science degree from Mount San Jacinto, I would apply for jobs and so forth. And this service called Grade Potential Tutoring literally contacted me about becoming a tutor within their system. I wish I could say I actually did it through their system, but I've tutored outside their system for, for a bit already. Uh, I've also provided uh, writing workshops here at the college uh, for the Chicago uh, research paper format. And I would also be, then I eventually would be asked to participate as a, as a um, volunteer at the art gallery. I'm currently in the process of applying for an internship with our local congressman. But getting, but just getting back to that, remember I said I was diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder and I have all of that behind me. Now from my own experience and from studies, just the bachelor's degree element is given proper supports, even, uh, students can excel in higher education. Now what are these supports? Now these supports I have overly generalized. And if you talk to me in person, I can give you more specific examples. But uh, there is a social, academic, and physical uh, 
support necessity. The social is this identity, this idea of belonging, this group, this community. This can impact the desire to keep pressing forward in your education, if you are in that person. Or if you are not part of that group, it still impacts because you may be weighed down by somebody who longs for that and you're not realizing it. Or you may still, not being on that spectrum, long for that social aspect. So I do want you to be aware that some people may not outwardly show that they want that community, but are longing deeply within them to be a part of something outside of themselves. Now, the second one has a little bit more concrete thing, is academic supports. There are some things that are like adding extra extra time for a test, accommodating test functions, uh, maybe uh, relocating somebody within the classroom, um, many different things. I, I recall a story when I was uh, doing government uh, in high school, where my professor, my, my my teacher, quite literally, moved me from the back where he had originally placed me to the front because I could not hear what he was saying to write the notes for his class, and he knew I was trying to do that, and I was like, "What am I missing?" which ended up helping me in the long run have, have a real good grade in the class. So sometimes it's something as small as that that will assist the student. Now, why do I comment and add this physical needs as separate from academic needs? Because these are physical needs are things that are primarily also affected on the outside of school that may put pressures. Like maybe they need funds to pay rent or need to find a place to live. That can impact a student's uh, attention to the academic and a connection to that community. And so we have to be, uh, we as a community have to be aware of potential needs, especially for those who may have learning disorders because they are one of the hardest hit populations when it comes to retaining employment. And it's not because they can't do things, it's because the education side has not trained properly for self-sufficiency. So it's kind of like weaning off these that will that needs to happen, and it needs to happen a lot slower than than what you would ex uh, what you would expect with a regular adult, which still, for many households, is too too quick. I could argue, um, I, a teenager turning eighteen, graduating high school, and being thrown out into the world. I don't want to say this negatively for those of you who may have done that may have actually inadvertently created a setback. A grace period of about six months should be for the average non-diagnosed uh, person uh, area. 
but so someone diagnosed on a in with a learning disorder may make a may need a, a year to a year and a half to properly adjust for life away from the family, life away from my, the parents. Because whenever you go from high school to college, there's a different expectation, a different how do we say it? A different um, form of instruction than what they may have had in school. Now this is to say that no matter the person who you speak to, who may be on the spectrum, on any on any uh, disorder, they should never be have a lowered expectation of the results than the uh, non-diagnosed students. The standards must be the same. The mode to getting there may be slightly different. We have to be aware that these are two very different areas.